This podcast is brought to you by MinervaBeauty.com. Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's podcast. Flying solo today. Actually, Carly might be here in a little bit. Christina might pop in. Who knows? Who knows what could happen? Uh, But I'm excited to see you all this morning. I took last week off because, um, well, I was traveling, and then it was kind of like Easter break. Um, So my son was off school, so we were hanging out with him, having a lot of fun. Uh, Just kind of spent the week doing that. So we're back um, I want to do this show every day this week. Um, next week, I have a um, uh, a big shoot with a pretty big, large company in the beauty industry. So next week's going to be really tough. Probably won't be able to do the show next week. So I'm going to try to do four in a row this week, uh, all the way through Friday uh, for you guys. Today, we're going to not only talk hair for a little bit. I want to see your questions in the chat. I see all of you guys on uh, YouTube. Facebook, um, all of the above. Actually, I'm going to get Instagram going as well. Um, so I see all of you guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm going to cut some curly hair today. Uh, Danielle, actually, who works with me, she permed a mannequin uh, for this so uh, that I could do some curly hair with you guys. So I'm going to show you guys a curly shag haircut. That's going to be later on uh, in just a little bit, really. I'm not going to talk that much this morning. Um, cause I want to get into cutting hair and I'm by myself. So, uh, talking to you guys alone is not as fun. Um, so ask your questions. I'll get, I'll get into that. And then also, um, I'm going to be in Nashville this weekend, um, teaching social media classes at Cosmo Prof. So those of you guys that are near the Nashville area, I'd love to see you at my classes. Um, that's going to be Sunday and Monday. So a lot of things coming up, a lot of cool things. Also, I have a Bob haircutting class. Um, on May 6th, hands on, I got a few tickets left. So any of you guys that want to join me, uh, we can cut hair together here in new hope. Um, that would be really cool as well. So tickets are on free salon education.com. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Minerva beauty.com. Uh, they're the best salon furniture company in the business. They also sell tools and different things as well. Um, but if you're looking to upgrade your salon, I was talking about this in San Jose, uh, last weekend, but, I believe that, uh, and I'll actually I'll tell this story too, and some of you guys may have heard it, but uh, I think it's important. It kind of plays a role in the fact that you have to upgrade yourself, your your business, all of that stuff needs to be changed often, not not like super often, but often enough to keep things fresh. Like people get bored. Um, that's why constantly companies are always coming out with new things. Well, hair salons for some reason uh, aren't always upgrading themselves, so. I think it's really important to think about not only upgrading your talent or getting educated, but also upgrading the look of your business. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, And that's kind of the key thing. Like a can of paint can go a long way uh, just to freshen things up, clean uh, the business. And then also, you know, places like MinervaBeauty.com have, uh, you know, chairs. Our chairs, I think, are like 300 bucks, 350 bucks. Um, but they're really nice and it can just give a whole new look to your place. So, um, the story that I, I tell in most of my classes is there was a, a movie theater about 10 miles down the road from, from the salon. And that movie theater was like an old school theater. Like it had that cool old school sign, um, you know, and it just looked like it had the old vibe. I never went in it, um, more of a, but, uh, that's kind of the thing. Like it, it was old school. It had the old school feeling. So uh, what happened, I believe, is that that business was probably really good, you know, in the in the 80s. It was probably the best uh, theater around. And then they didn't evolve. And when they were making their money, they weren't putting the money back into the business. And when you don't do that, you don't feed the business, you don't keep upgrading things, things get stale. And unfortunately, um, 
about five years ago, I drove past that movie theater and the sign said, uh, that's all folks. Thanks for 30 years. And my thing with that is they, they never upgraded in 30 years. They still look the same. And when you look at movie theaters now, they have recliner seats. They have, uh, they serve alcoholic beverages. They serve food. Like you pick your seat, like all these different things, uh, have evolved in the movie theater business to try to compete with Netflix and, you know, all these different, uh, Amazon online, you know, watching movies online. So you have to compete with that. And when you're not competing, your business is going to fail. So uh, the average salon closes within 10 years. And I believe that that comes, there's a lot of things involved in that, but, but a lot of it has to do with just not evolving. So make sure that you're constantly evolving. Uh, that's a big plug, MinervaBeauty.com, but check them out if you want to, uh, see if your furniture, um, needs a little upgrade, a little love. Uh, I see you guys on Instagram. I see you everywhere else. Thanks for posting where you're from. I love seeing that. Uh, let's see. Who's this? Hair's Solution Videos. I also make videos on hair content. I'm almost uploaded 180 videos. Oh, awesome. So let me see. Discuss the importance of graduation with curl that people need to know. Gotcha. Uh, we're going to go over all kinds of curly hair stuff today. Also, Paul Mitchell, um, who's a, a great sponsor of Free Salon Education. They've been a sponsor for a long time. Sent me a box of products um, and it happens to have the new lavender mint in it, uh, which is kind of cool because it's all, it's a little bit about curl, uh, curl foam in there, uh, hydration, all of that stuff. So I'm going to tie those products in and we're going to talk about also the, um, you know, different ways to create on curly hair because cutting a shag on curly hair is a little bit different than cutting it on straight hair because of the way that the hair kind of moves. So we're going to definitely get into that. Uh, the only, uh, other thing. So a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of people doing live stuff on the internet. And a, apart from what I'm doing currently right now, which is sitting down talking to you guys, it's a little bit different. This is a podcast, um, so it just happens to be video. So it's me sitting here talking to the camera. The pro, what, what I'm seeing, and especially a lot of the bigger uh, beauty brands, even the media companies um, in the industry, what they do with their live videos is this long intro. And what people need to realize is that when you're doing live stuff on the internet, it, people's attention spans are short. Like so many people have already dropped off of this because it's just me sitting here talking, right? If I was doing something more interesting, more people would hang on. Now, when I put this onto an audio format and I put it out there, um, you know, it gets a lot more engagement if, for a longer point of time because that's what people are expecting, Right. What's happening in this particular thing is that the video says that we're going to do a curly hair uh, shag haircut, but I talk for 10 minutes at the beginning because I'm recording a podcast. And when you're doing that, people tune in and they're not seeing what they what they thought they were going to see. Their attention span is like, I don't want to see this. And then they go on to something else, right? So you need to make sure that it's not the old way of doing things. Like we used to teach classes. Like we would go in... Uh, so any of you educators out there that are teaching on the internet now, when you think about, you walked into a class, you did your whole setup, you did this introduction, you told this story at the beginning, you, you talked about yourself, like you talk about all these different things. The internet doesn't have time for any of that. They want to know, they want the good stuff, right? So you need to make sure that when you do your intro to your live video, you should have your camera pointed right away at the hair. No one needs to see your face. No one cares about your face unless you're showing something interesting, right? So um, you have to take away that part of like they people want to see who I am. They don't. Know, they don't, probably don't know who you are, and they don't care about anything until they know that they're going to get some some sort of value from you. So what I do is start hands and hair. So while they're swiping through and quickly going through their news feed, they see hands and hair first, and not you talking. When you see somebody talking, you never stop on it. Um, so just make sure that anytime you're doing something live on the internet, and that also takes away that whole, um, the person that's going to record you live is not uh, not telling you that they've already hit the live button. Like once you hit live, it's live. Like there's no delay, right? It goes back and it takes back the footage that wasn't 
like, cause there's a little delay, right? So it takes away this deer in a headlights look where you're sitting there and you're about to go live and you're like staring at the camera and it's uncomfortable. And then, you know, no one's really watching it. So you got to make sure that right when you hit live, so somebody say, all right, I'm going now, bam. And then you just start talking and you have the, the camera on the hair so that something interesting is happening. And then once you get a break in what you're talking about, like as your hands are working, you can pan up if you want people to see your face. If you want people to see you talking, then kind of back out a little bit, show everything that's happening, show the room, whatever it is, show the products that you're talking about, whatever you're trying to do uh, on the internet. But education just has to be different. It's not it's not the typical, like it's not a news broadcast where you're doing your intro and then going through it. So that's my tip for uh, doing live stuff on the internet. It's, you know, we've been live on a podcast for quite a while now. This is probably like our fourth year. Um, and the evolution of live is, is awesome because, you know, you can have fancy equipment to do live stuff or you can do it on your phone. Like right now I'm live on all different channels but I'm also live on Instagram on my phone. So there, there's so many different avenues and the fact that you can just hit that button and go live, but you got to do it the right way or you won't get any engagement in the video. So make sure you're doing something that is doing something for the person on the other end and not you know, playing to your ego uh, at the beginning of the video. Um, all right. There was another article that I saw that I thought was pretty interesting. I want to talk about this on the podcast and then we're going to get to cutting hair. But... Um, this one I thought was funny. It was on ABC uh, News, actually, but it says that faking positive emotions at work, like smiling or resisting the urge to roll one's eyes, can be draining and it can lead to more drinking after hours. So I just thought this was kind of funny because, not funny, I mean, it is funny, but it's not at the same time. But they're talking about how it used to be like people would put on a smile for their customers and they're kind of saying like, now it might actually be unhealthy to fake getting along with people. And because we're in such a people business, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I'd love to see what you guys are thinking about this because it's just hilarious. But um, they're saying don't fake your smile anymore and because it can cause um, unhealthy things to happen. They found that employees were who were forced, uh, forced themselves to smile and be happy in front of customers were more at risk for heavier drinking after work. So do you find this to be true? I personally, I don't really think that it stresses me out to pretend to be happy. But what I do want to say about this and where it kind of ties into our industry is I don't take, there's very few people in my book that I don't really love, right? And hopefully, you know, people aren't watching and thinking, am I that person? But you know, we all have the, a couple clients, but I would hope that your book isn't full of people that you have to fake all day long. Uh, and if you do have to fake all day long that you like people, this is probably not the business for you. <laughs> Amanda says, if I didn't fake, if I didn't fake it, I would have no clients ever. That's hilarious. Um, how early is too early to start drinking? Well, Mike, well, nice. Uh, if possible, let's see. Do, 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 do. Tori says, hey, Matt, uh, hey, I messaged you on your Matt Beck page. Not sure if you see those or not. So best way to message me is either, th um, it's probably through Instagram. And usually, so here's here's the thing with messaging people, because I think it, that people do it all over the place. Facebook is, is a tough one because it, if you're messaging somebody's Facebook page, um, like my my business page, it goes off into a, a whole nother world that I don't really see that as much. Um, Facebook Messenger regular, I see alerts, but um, that's only if, if you're friends on my personal Facebook page. And then Instagram DMs, the problem with that is I it goes into a separate page so a lot of times I don't see it. And if I do see it, it's it's quite a ways because I'll take a, a second to go through those kind of hidden messages because it only shows the people that I follow in the uh, the first page. And then the second page is people that um, follow me and, and DM, but I don't happen to follow them back. So um, if you DM me and then you tag me on a message and say, hey, I sent you a DM, 
in the comments of an Instagram post, that's a good way to get people to go look for it um, because otherwise they don't always see it. So that would be my uh, recommendation. Let's see. Yes, if it's a long intro, you've lost me. Darla probably lost you already. Let's see. I'm real with my clients. This is windy. I'm real with my clients. They love my honesty. You know what? I actually find that that's kind of a cool thing too. Um, I'm not, I'm probably, I'm like half and half, I think, uh, with being real uh, with all of my clients, let's say. But um, then you got guys like Brian who works at, at the salon here and he he's real with everybody and he pretty much speaks with whatever's on his mind and uh, and his clients love him for it. So I think the 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 biggest thing for either life in general or, you know, just getting through your work day and not feeling like you need to drink a lot is the fact that you um, that you just be yourself and um, and hopefully that ties into you wanting to work with people because you're in a business where you should work with people anyways. All right. Let's see. Hair by Thua, I think. It's so true. Be professional, but you don't have to pretend to be so chipper. Your clients really don't want to hear about your problem when they come in. Just be real, but be professional. Yeah, I think that that's a good point. Um, just making sure that um, you're not bringing negativity into the workplace, but there's no reason to pretend to be overly like anything that you're not either. Just uh, just be professional. Talk about hair. Talk about like if you're doing hair behind the chair, you should have a passion for it. And if you have a passion for something, then it shouldn't be hard to be happy doing it. So leave everything else at home and then do hair and be happy. And then when you go home, you know, then then you won't be drinking your <laughs> drinking yourself. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get over there and cut hair. Uh, this was today's podcast. If you're listening to the audio version of this and you want to see the haircut, then leave iTunes or wherever you're listening to this and go over to YouTube. You can watch the live video and you can watch the haircut. Um, those of you guys that are tuning in live right now, I'm going to walk over and I'm going to get set up for the haircut and then we'll get started with that. Um, Thank you to everyone that's hanging in there. Um, hope you guys are having a good Tuesday. And uh, let's get started. Here we go. Here we go. Instagram, if you would like to watch the haircut, then go to YouTube, Free Salon Education on YouTube, and you can watch the cut, ask questions, get involved. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna be live over there. It's hard for me to hold the phone and do that at the same time. So go watch it. Thanks for tuning in. All right, we'll see you there. All right, guys. Let's see here. Let me just make sure everything's working. Let me know if you guys can hear me good, hear me well, hear me good. All right. 
switch over to this view. All right, guys, let me know that you can hear me before I get started. Tell me if the sound is on a scale of one to 10. Is the sound good? Is it a 10? Is it a two? And I can see your chat over there as well. So, um, cool. What's up, Joel? Good to see you. A 9.113. All right. Take it. 10, a 10, a 10. An 11.3, Matthew. Good call. All right. So today we're going to cut a curly hair shag. I'm really excited, super excited about this cut um, because Danielle uh, did perm the mannequin for me. So it's going to be, it's going to have a really cool feel to it. It's a nice curl. It's not super, cur it's not like extra tight curls. Um, it's a nice natural wave to it. Um, so I'm going to go through different steps on why I would cut this curly the way that I'm cutting it. And then I'm also going to go over um, different ways that I would cut it straight as well, just so that you guys can get an idea of the differences. Um, all right, cool. If you guys have questions during this uh, class, then just type them in. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, you, whatever you're at, Twitter, um, just type them in and I will, I will answer those questions for you as I go. I can see them, but a lot of times I'm working, so it might take a second. If I don't answer your question, just repost it. Um, that way I can make sure that I can see it because I can only see about five at a time as they go through. Um, I'm going to talk about the sectioning of this cut as well. Um, the reason I sectioned it off uh, prior to the class is to, um, so I don't have to take the time to do that, but I want to break it down for you guys because it's really important. So um, here is the first thing. I went parietal ridge, but when you're working with curly hair, see here, and hang with me while I make adjustments, part of working by yourself. Okay, so when I'm working with curly hair, here's the thing. I When I work at the parietal ridge, sometimes on straight hair, I'll go a little bit higher on it. But because I'm working with curly hair, that tiny little bit of a corner, if I start to work with that hair and start to elevate it, now I'm going to start to build up extra weight around this uh, the head shape. So I like to work really on that sole flat area. Another thing that I really uh, found interesting when I was working with Sam Villa last week and Andrew um, was how they sectioned off the side. They went a little bit further back. What I used to do constantly was to go right behind the ear and I would kind of use that as my corner. Now I'm going all the way down and pretty much connecting a straight line from uh, back here on the about the crown of the head down to the edge where this is a straight line all the way down to the hairline. This way, I know when I'm working with hair that's less dense than I am the hair in the back. So I found that really interesting, and I think that's why it's, it's, it's nice to work with other artists other than yourself sometimes because you pick up little tips and tricks um, from things that they do and talk about. So uh, that's that part. Now, I did the same thing on both sides. So I went parietal ridge all the way around but went low parietal all the way back down to low crown in the back and then right here separate the division line and then that's where i start so let's see all right now we're going to cut a shag so we're going to be working with some concave layering um, i really want to pop some of this curl up um, thing with concave layering is that you're going to create a scooped line within the head within the uh, haircut and i'm also you want to make sure that this elbow um, is free, right? So you'll know that you're on the wrong side of the head if you come over here. And if my elbow is coming down and going to hit the head and it's getting in the way, then that's not what you're looking for. You want it to have the freedom of your elbow to move along with the head, just like that. A couple of tools I'm going to be using. This is uh, this my scissor made by Mizutani. Um, it's a five-inch scissor. I like using a shorter blade um, because I get the most like, so for me, a longer scissor, 
uh, just gets a little bit weaker towards the tip. When you're cutting precision hair, I like to have a shorter blade, a stronger blade um, that gets in there and cuts. I'm also going to use the YS Park. This is a wide tooth comb. Uh, this is a 332 comb. Uh, I like that for cutting uh, curly texture uh, or doing dry cutting um, because it allows me get that focused in. It allows me to get uh, a nice loose tension to the haircut. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the head down just slightly. Um, and this for me is just going to help um, as I'm scooping, just kind of bring it straight out like that. Um, that was the worst description ever, but I apologize. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wet the hair down just a little bit. Key thing in hair cutting is just to keep consistency with the saturation of the hair. You don't want to cut some of it dry, some of it wet. Um, it can just change the tension. It changes um, the really mostly the tension, I guess you could say. All right. I see your guys' comments. Love that Andrew guy. Me too. Still learning so much from him. Glad he is my mentor. All right, Michael. Very cool. All right. So here's what we're going to do. First, uh, first parting, first section. It's going to be pretty much straight down center. I'm going to go slightly to the left because I want to grab a center section here. I'm going to go all the way down to the hairline. I'll turn the head so you guys can see. There's my section. Bring it back over here. Now I'm going to lift the hair just like this. I'm going to comb towards my body and I'm going to lift up and then I've got my length right here. My length is going to be the guide. I'm going to go in and cut short to long. Just like that. And so I'm not taking away any length. I want to keep that length, but I'm cutting nice short uh, layers in the haircut. So you can see that. You see how it's going to start to build up right away. That's the beautiful thing about curly hair and what I love about it. When you cut straight hair like that, it kind of falls and goes a little lifeless. Uh, with curly hair, it just expands and grows. So I'm not afraid of taking this too short at this point because um, with curly hair, I'm trying to build that shape up. I want to really kind of wrap that shape around the head, build a ton of volume up on the top and sleek, make it nice and sleek down the sides. All right, so here's the next section, parting, vertical, straight down, going about a half an inch over, and then I'm going to bring that to the previous And again, lifting that elbow up, there's my guide. The bottom falls out, and I cut across just like that to the edge of my fingers. Now, I want to have a traveling guide here working my way around the head. I could, if I wanted to build a little weight towards the front, I could uh, overdirect everything to the center. I don't want to overdirect everything to the center because I want that rounded shape in this shag haircut. I want a nice, even base around the haircut with the length scooping out. I don't want longer layers to go. So if you don't want the longer layers, you don't want to over direct, right? So traveling guide all the way around the head, working my way around. What's up, Joel? Just joining us late. We're doing a shaggy, a curly shag haircut. So now I take half of the old and I move that out of the way. So let me turn this so you can see. So I take half of the old, move it out of the way, grab a little bit of the old and bring it into the new section. And that's going to come directly out from where it lives. That'll continue to keep that round shape in the haircut. So just like before, bringing it straight out from the head, scooping it up, finding your guide and cutting across. Is this cut, so this is James, is this cut applicable uh, to mid-length hair only or would it work with long hair? It would totally work with long hair. Um, the only thing I would change about this with long hair is to, well, it depends on how long, right? So if it's like, you know, really long, then I would say maybe not this type of cut, maybe a little bit longer layers and then build the top a little shorter. Um, for That would be my preference. But for maybe just a, a tad bit longer, I would do it the same way. So it really just depends on the length of the hair. So half of the old, I'm going to move that over just like before. 
grab a little bit of new. Some of you guys would want to probably push yourself and just grab all of this. The reason I'm not grabbing all of this is because the more hair you grab, the more over direction that happens. Now on a curlier, looser haircut, that's not a big deal as much as it is in a precision, like fine hair, straight hair haircut. But at the same time, um, consistency is key when you're working with haircutting. So just always practicing doing things the right way. Um, so I'm not over directing too far. The more hair you pinch together, the more over direction that happens when you bring it out. So again, bringing it up, got my guide right there, kicking that elbow out, cutting short to long. Take half of that hair, push it over, bringing it back. Now it's straight out from where it lives, just like this. Now again, with our sectioning, so that's cut short to long. So now you're gonna start to see how those layers are just starting to pop and build up. Let me zoom in. Oh, that. So you can start to see these layers, how they pop up. The other cool thing about this is that it's got a nice kind of flat shape to it, but it will bevel in a bit and it'll be nice and skinny through here. I, I love the look of that. And then the other thing I like is you can see the layering pattern because we're following the round of the head. The layering is so even, so it just got a nice feel to it. It doesn't have that kind of heavy weight falling behind the ear. So that's where we're at so far. Now we're going to do the same thing. So let me tilt the head down again. My body position is not going to change. My body position is not going to change. So what I'm going to do is comb. And the only difference is, so grab some of that old, grab some of the new, is I'm going to now be pushing the hair instead of pulling it, right? So pushing instead of pulling. Bring it through, just like that. Up. Very little hair to cut. Didn't grab much of a section. I'll grab, take some of the old out. Grab some new. Now I'm pushing it away from me just like this. Oh geez, there we go. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. So all coming straight out from the head. Any questions so far? I think it's Jax, Jax Orr, saying, I uh, love your work, love the technical side of all your cuts. Thank you so much. All right, so vertical, another vertical parting, bringing it straight out from where it lives. So you can see scooping straight up, and then I go in and I cut. Short to long. Take a little bit of the old, push away, grab some of the new, like this, bring it up. There we go. Again, some of the old. So what I'm focusing on anytime I'm cutting hair is not only the elevation of how I'm working, but also um, the over direction. So it's focusing on this and it's focusing on this. So you want to make sure that you're, you're looking at both ways, both things, because inconsistencies happen in both. So if your layering is inconsistent, then your weight's going to be inconsistent when you look at it uh, vertically. If your over direction is inconsistent, then you're going to have inconsistencies when you look at it horizontally. It's going to not it's not going to be balanced that way. So, you really want to make sure that you're focused on both of those things. Straight out from the head. Cutting through. All right, we're going to get to the last little bit here. 
little bit of the old. Don't get greedy. That's me talking to myself. Even if that client's waiting behind you, you can feel them breathing. <laughs> don't, don't take that extra section. Discipline. All right. I just had this weird image of a client breathing down your neck. Okay. So that is the back. I'm going to tilt the head up here so you guys can see. Let me share it with you. Okay. So here is our layering that's happening. Now, some of you guys, hopefully you can see it well, but here's the key things. Because we cut with the round of the head, you can see that even flow of weight. Um, we also had a nice even kind of flow around this way as well, vertically. So everything is following the head shape. We could consider this kind of a round uh, haircut. So when you look at the side angle, you could see where it's pretty flat, but at the same time, what happens is right away, this part of the head, right? Um, this From here down, it curves uh, really quickly into the occipital bone, right? So right away, this will start to build up. And so that's why you don't wanna go too long, especially when you're cutting a shag, you don't wanna go too long with this part of the haircut because if you go too long with it right away, then it's gonna have a huge buildup of weight. It's just gonna expand out. So you wanna keep it nice and sleek and understand that the head shape is going to create the haircut for you. It's not so much um, that angle. So again, if I was gonna now connect the top, I don't want that to be expanded too far out. So make sure, don't be afraid to go a little bit short in there. All right, so that is the back. This mannequin head does have great curl. Who's saying that? Danielle. And I don't think that, that's not the Danielle that did this curl. But Danielle did perm this mannequin for us for this situation. All right, so now we're going to move into the sides. So right like that. Now here is the, the crazy thing, not the crazy thing, but the the key point of the sides we already have our length established now if you didn't have your length established you would cut the length first um, especially because we were using that length as a guideline uh, in this cut so make sure that you have your length established this is already kind of there um, here's the difference we've been working with density that goes from this part of the head all the way down to the nape now we're working with the density that goes from the same part of the head but only to the top of the ear so it's a lot less hair that we're working with. So what I want to do is I want to kind of build up some weight in this area. So with this part of the shag, all of this, instead of coming straight out from the head and continuing around, assuming that that would give me that same feeling, I want to push a little bit of extra weight into this back area and have some fun layers around the face. So my goal, let me zoom out and talk to you for a second. Okay, so my goal with this haircut is to have those short layers. A shag has short layers, that's the key. But here's the, the thing is we're working with different densities, right? So we're working with less density on the side than we are in the back. When you're working with less density, you have to cut things differently if you want them to look the same. I know that sounds confusing a little bit, but as I'm working around here, everything's nice and even. If I continue to do the same thing on the sides, I would get a very weak feel uh, to this haircut. So what I wanna do, or even maybe a hole, which is a lot, a lot of you guys get scared of that. So what I wanna do is I wanna co continue getting these shorter layers, because that's what makes this a shag, but I want to push a little extra weight into the back area. So instead of bringing everything straight out from the head all the way around, I'm now gonna bring it up here and cut it short to long in the very front of the head. So we're gonna do kind of a, it's not face framing, I wouldn't say that we're framing the face, but we're gonna use a technique like face framing that will allow those layers to kind of build around the face. All right, let me 
saturate this, keep the consistency. Jackie, thank you for the shout out. If you guys are watching on Facebook or YouTube, one thing, if you love these videos, if you like what we're doing here, uh, make sure you share it so that that way we can get as many people as possible watching this show every day. Um, that would be great. I would appreciate it. All right. I literally just went to a class and watched this same haircut. Sweet. Just so we're clear, I don't invent haircuts. I just teach haircuts. That's teach focusing either, I don't think. All right. That's pretty good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all of this here. So take a diagonal forward parting like that. That's just because I wanna mimic that, pulling it up in front of me. And I'm gonna bring it around the head just like this. So I'm gonna stand on the opposite side of the chair and that's where I'm gonna cut it. So just like that, bring it up here. And I'm gonna actually do a little bit of point cutting to cut this. Now the key thing for me this part of the cut is to have the shape of this angle or the angle of this parallel pretty much with the forehead. I don't want to uh, elevate it too much. I don't want to layer that too much. I want kind of nice feel to the shape of the head. So if you play the shape of the head, the haircut will actually flow that way. Um, okay. So Tori's asking, this is a good question, Tori. So let me see if I can read it real quick. So since you're talking about even saturation and consistency, why do you cut some haircut videos where you cut the bottom wet, then dry? That was the question I messaged you about. Oh, good call. Okay. See, now you got me. All right. So Tori, let me do this real quick. Okay, so Tori, here's the answer to that. Sometimes, just so you guys that maybe are following me for the first time, never seen me cut hair before, sometimes I like to cut either my baseline wet and create the shape and then cut the top dry. Um, she's saying well, if you like the consistency, if you wanna keep saturating the hair, why would you do that in, in some cases? So the reasoning for that is when I cut the top dry, but I cut the bottom wet. I cut the part wet that I want to be precise. So I'll go through and I'll do a precision haircut on the entire bottom of the haircut. Then on the top of the head, I blow it dry and I go in and I texturize, I detail, I add movement, texture, all that soften it. All that stuff happens on the top of the head and we'll just kind of consider that like the roof. So when I think about haircutting, sometimes when I'm doing, I want to create like a textured bob, but I want it to be precise and have a nice shape to it. I'll do that base cut, which gives me the precision feel, which is basically like, you know, the structure of a house, right? Like the, the two by fours, everything that puts it together. And then the top, when I lay that over top of that structure, it's just the decoration of the cut. So if I wanted to have that texture or the movement or whatever it is. So hopefully, hopefully that answers it and kind of clarifies it. For this cut, I, um, I could either do it dry or wet, but I would want to stay consistent with that because the whole haircut is being done uh, with a purpose. I'm not really, I'm not having texture on top and structure on bottom. I'm having the same kind of texture throughout the whole cut. So I need it to stay consistent. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So we did our first cut there. So there's our length, right? So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to take another Diagonal forward parting. And bring it up in front of me. This doesn't really, so this is all textured. So I'm not really that worried about my tension or anything like that uh, because this is gonna have a little more of an organic kind of feel to it. Um, so I'm just going through 
I uh, just want to make sure that that connects in the back there. So continuing to bring that forward, what's happening is that hair is going from further and further away. Just like that. Through and point cut. And then I'll continue and then connect into this back area, bringing everything around and forward. Just like that. Texture. So this is all to a stationary guide. And I'll go even past this hairline section because then I know that this connects. So I, I go until the hair doesn't reach anymore. See, there's barely anything that even reaches over there. So now I know that I've connected this side and the back. So you can see when this goes like this, it's got a really nice kind of flow to it. I'll turn her so you can see. So we've got our layering, which you can see has a nice buildup to it. Still starts a little big, gets sleek, um, and then tapers off into the back. So we've got this nice layering pattern, shifts into the back and then flows around in that even kind of feel. So now we're going to cut the other side. So I'll go to the other end of the chair, the other side of the chair. Take out our clip. So now to measure, and this is like another thing that I didn't really do prior to uh, working with Sam via last week, but um, actually measuring, which is something I never really did, but looking at it in the comb. So knowing where that is, so then I can grab another piece just like this, bring it out here, and then know that this is where I wanna cut it. So I actually take that piece. And what was interesting to me with that whole concept there is that when we build things, we measure and cut. Um, now, the face isn't always symmetrical, but it's a good place to start, right? So just making sure that we have that same uh, length as our starting point, there's no reason why we shouldn't be measuring stuff. You measure things to make sure that they're correct all the time. So I measured that point. Now I can take my diagonal forward parting, turn this like this. So diagonal forward, just like that. There we go. So now my fingers, will, my finger angle will mimic just like that. I've got my guide, I can see it in there. Following the forehead, just like that. And I come through and I cut. Break it up a little bit. So now, diagonal forward line, working with that stationary guide, bringing it forward, point cutting through. Let's see, how do you cut? How did you know how short to cut the first cut in the front section? All right, good question. So how did I know how short to cut this front piece? So I think here's where haircutting becomes um, not necessarily trial and error, but you start to figure out things that you like. So this first little piece here is right at the cheekbone. Now it's curly hair, so I go a little bit past the cheekbone. Um, and knowing when I held this out here, I knew where that bottom piece was gonna fall without actually checking it. If you're new to cutting hair, bringing it over like this, bringing it over and looking at this piece and holding it with your hand and seeing where you know where it will fall, that's a good way to do it. But for me, I just wanted to enhance. So when you're enhancing somebody's face shape, you look at the shape of the face, right? And I look at from the corner of the mouth here and then the shape that happens, it starts to elevate up. So what I'm doing is I'm just enhancing that, building up that shape, especially with curly hair. I like to expand that out, open up the face a little bit so that that kind of, this goes with it. Same thing with when you're cutting a bob, if you're trying to enhance, you know, maybe the cheekbone area or the, along the, um, 
the jawline that way. So just really finding a place on the face, which a cheekbone is a good area to, to start or um, at the uh, jawline, those kind of things, corner of the mouth. Look for a point that you're trying to build from and where you're building out from. All right, so turn this. So same thing, bring it out here, front of the face, just like that, point cut through. Again, sorry if I'm blocking you. There we go. If you guys have issues point cutting, my little rule is point towards your body, back at your body, and then point cut through it. Okay, last little bit, finishing it off. I have to give an extra thank you to Danielle today for making this mannequin curly. She did a great job. All right, now this is tying back into uh, the back portion where the hairline goes down, where that density becomes heavier. So that's where I wanna make sure that this is connecting through. You can see, well, you can kind of see. See a little bit of those tiny little hairs still sticking out. So I go through, point cut that. You can even wrap all this around, see what fits, nothing else left. So now we know that we've connected it. So you can see this shape that's happening, right? Um, I, I love the way that curly hair just starts to build. Before you even blow it dry, you can start to see the shape ha unfolding. That's such a unique thing about curly hair, something that I really love uh, cutting it. So you can see it's expanding out, goes really nice with that face shape. It's kind of creating a heart shape, gets sleek throughout um, the head. All right, so now we're going to work into the top. The top is kind of uh, a key thing to um, where it can either go right or wrong in, in a shag haircut on curly hair because you need to cut the top short, but you also need to realize that um, even though you're cutting it short, it can't be too short and it can't be too rounded looking. So one thing that I want to do is I want to kind of have a fringe that goes around. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by cutting that. I'm going to sec section this right down the center. So from the, the nose up here, take my section. So now I've got this split into two. I could now continue to just bring this diagonal forward like that and connect it to this part. Um, what I'm going to do is bring everything forward. I want to cut a nice rounded shape in the very front. Then I'm going to go through and layer the back. So sometimes I push weight into a place so that I can cut it later. So here we go. I want to cut this. I'm going to cut it about at the nose because it's going to pop up. And I know it's going to pop up because it's curly. So you want to take that into consideration. All right, here we go. So I'm going to work on a diagonal back now following the head shape. And I'm going to bring this forward. So now... You can see how much tension happens on that because I use the tighter teeth. I don't want that much tension, especially when I'm cutting a fringe. I want it to be nice and light. So now you see the tension that happens when I comb with the, the wider teeth. I don't want to hold this too tight in my hand. I also don't want to go below when I take my section below this um, parietal ridge area. So that's another thing you want to take into consideration. My finger angle is going to follow the face. I'm going to start with a little bit of an elevated line and I'm going to work right here across. So you can see how it kind of pops a little bit. I'm going to take another diagonal back parting. And then when I take that diagonal back parting, I comb it forward and I only take from the parietal ridge over and I bring that to me. Now my elevation is going to shift. So now the first bit I cut lower. And now I'm just going to shift it up just a little bit. 
pretty much straight off of the head shape. So when you look at, here's the angle of the head. This is where 90 is. So I want to come about zero. So this is below zero. It's going to be super heavy. When you have curly hair, you don't want it super heavy, but you don't want to layer it too much either. So straight out from the head, and then I've got my zero degree point right there. Um, for those of you flat worlders out there from beauty school, um, I get that zero is normally straight down, but when you're working on a head on a round surface, you got to look at where 90 is at. Zero is a pretty soft feel. Anything below zero gets super heavy. So I bring that out. I keep it at zero. I'm going to point cut my line just like that and let it flow. So you can see starting to create that fringe in there. So again, diagonal back parting. Comb it forward. Take out the parietal. Now, what is this doing for me as I'm working my way back? The biggest thing that it's doing is as I work my way back, this is getting longer and longer. I am going to go in and layer it like we talked about, but I don't mind pushing that extra weight into the back. Um, so bringing it forward, a nice little elevation, and that's going to be my guideline. See it right there. So Now it's starting to connect through. Last bit. I'm going to pull all this forward for the fun of it. Cut some of those layers in. Take out the parietal. And all of this is coming now from the back, so this would be super heavy. We're going to layer into it. But I wanted to have that nice little angle there. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. You see that kicking it through. The first lang length, all right, Sonia, I'm trying to understand, is is it the same length as the back, I think is what you're saying. It's a little bit shorter, so it goes short to long, right? So um, the way that we cut it when we did the, the face frame part or the part around the face, um, that's cutting a short to long line. So it's giving it a little bit more, almost like a V shape in the back, maybe not quite as extreme as that. But you can see that even... Through all of this, the weight is flowing backwards. I like that in a shag, gives it that movement, kind of pulls it off the face a little bit. Um, so that's what we're creating. Okay, so now I want to connect. Working diagonal back. Let's see if I can show this to you guys the easiest way. So diagonal back just like this. And then grabbing from parietal over. piece in there okay so this is going to come down and again this will be lower right less low tension and we're going to cut our line i'm going to recomb a little bit cut that line now you see that around the face now i take another diagonal back parting from parietal over And you'll know if you don't because you'll see these longer pieces in there. I bring that over to me, and now my elevation starts to get a little bit higher. And I point cut through. I'm point cutting to keep a nice soft line in there. I don't want anything harsh. Again, diagonal back, bringing it forward. And at this point, Everything from the parietal will not continue, so you don't have to worry as much. Cutting. Oh, it's just like that. I think, let's see. And my elevation each time just shifts a little bit. Everything from the back to the front. Okay. No geez. All right. So you can see the shape happening. You can see the heavy fringe happening. 
And now I want to go through and I'm just going to actually, you know what? I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to do this back portion dry. I've got some longer pieces back here. I want to cut into this. I'm going to do a little tease cutting. So we're going to dry this first and then we'll go through and uh, finish the cut. So a couple things I want to show you guys. I'm going to use a couple different brand new tools here. So we got Paul Mitchell. This is the Lavender Mint Curl Refresh Foam. Um, so revives and enhances texture. So I'm digging that. So we'll see what this is like. Honestly, guys, just took this out of the box today. Um, but I'm excited about it. And the fact that I was going to cut a curly shag anyways. This is probably going to put me to sleep because it's lavender. Hmm. Smells delicious. I just put it all over the microphone. All right. So I'm going to run that in the hair. Now, here's a couple key things with curly, uh, curly hair, right? And really any hair, but curly hair most importantly, is to make sure that you get full saturation of the product. I also like to use a foam, but I also, uh, especially if the foam isn't super like, it actually feels really conditioning, but um, I like to add in some kind of cream into curly hair as well. Something with like uh, a light hold, light control. So this product's also, it's taming cream, uh, tea tree lavender mint. So I'm gonna put that cream in there as well. And that'll just give me a little extra kind of hold to the hair. So I bring this through. Now, what I was saying is when you do curly hair, when you work with curly hair, um, it's really important to get full saturation of the product on every strand of hair. Um, I think a lot of people will just throw products, especially like our guests at home. They'll take the product, they'll throw it in their hair, they'll scrunch it in like this, and then they just kind of go, right? And then they wonder why their some of their hair gets frizzy. Um, the reason your hair gets frizzy is because not all the hair has product on it. So I'm going to brush it through. And then when you brush it through, that will help uh, kind of saturate the product all over the hair. So that's number one. The second tip, which I love for curly hair, something I learned a long time ago. One sec. Once, once you fully saturate the hair with the product, then what I like to do is I like to take a damp towel. So this towel is kind of damp, but we'll make it a little more damp. And when you have a damp towel, it doesn't create as much frizz. So I'll take the towel and instead of my hands, I'll use the towel. I forget who taught me this a long time ago, but um, I'll take the damp towel and scrunch that into the hair and that'll reactivate the curl a little bit. So just kind of working my way through there. The more you put like your hands or dry things throughout the hair, the frizzier it's going to get. So we'll go through and do that. Just reactivating that curl. So you can see how the curl just starts to kind of expand back up. But now it's got plenty of product on it and also uh, it's not frizzy. Now we're going to diffuse. Now diffusing the hair is another... Uh, it's Paul Mitchell Pro Tools Express Ion Turbo Light. Uh, we're going to use that. Oh, it's autofocus. Come on, okay. So um, we're going to use this. I'm going to put it on, and then I'm going to do low airflow, high heat. So this is the airflow, low airflow, high heat. See if I can get this back. There we go. All right. Now, when I put this, uh, let's see. Why do you make diagonal sections instead of horizontal when cutting the fringe? Um, diagonal's always softer. So, and I was cutting a diagonal back line. So, even though I was pulling everything over, um, I'm cutting it and it's going with the flow of the head, right? So, that's why um, I cut using diagonal partings instead of. Um, horizontal. So horizontally, I'd be cutting it and then it would be over directing and swinging over and just work the same way. So I hope that answers that. Um, what products am I using? 
Okay, we did talk about that. So, um, but this is the Paul Mitchell Curl Refresh Foam and uh, the Paul Mitchell Tea Tree Lavender Mint Taming Cream. I combined those two together. Uh, actually, I used the foam first, then I put the cream on. Uh, I like the cream for a nice little more conditioning hold. Um, I feel like it, it takes away some of that uh, um, frizz a little bit. So now I go low, uh, low wind, uh, low pressure, high heat to blow it dry. I'll go in here and I'm just going to take the hair and put it into the fingers of the diffuser and just let it sit there. Now, biggest challenge with people and working with curly hair is they get impatient. I think honestly it's patience is the hardest thing in hair in general because usually there's somebody waiting for us on the other end or you know we're just we're not you know whatever it is I don't know but um, you got to be patient especially with curly hair is just go through and lift the hair that's what these fingers are for lift it in don't grab it with your hand don't move the hair around a lot that gets it more and more frizzy. You want to let it dry the, naturally the way that it is. That's the whole purpose. So let the fingers do the job on the diffuser. Put this up to the head. Now, I'm, I'm kind of tilting it back a little bit to let the f hair fall into it, but not keep it right at the scalp to burn the scalp. So just continuing through there. We'll work our way around. And you want the hair to get fully dry because the, if it stays kind of, if moisture stays in the hair, what happens is that as soon as you go out in the humidity or anything like that, the heat, and it starts to dry on its own, it starts to expand and kind of build out. So if you actually want to create a hairstyle that's going to last you all day on curly hair, you need to get through and dry the whole thing all the way through. Tori says, I've always had issues with clients saying it's too hot when diffuse hair on high heat. Then turn the heat down. You know what I mean? Like, if you're having issues, if you're ever having issues, make adjustments. Everything I'm saying is not um, the way, that's not the only way. And if your client is sensitive, then make sure you don't fry their head. Uh, just go through on low, uh, medium heat, and it works fine. It just takes a little bit longer. That's it. But the heat factor doesn't really matter as much. If you guys have more questions, just post them. I can see it. And I'm not really, I'm bored and I'm not doing anything while I'm uh, diffusing here. This is my least favorite part in the slime when I'm diffusing because then I have to like, it's not that loud. So, and I'm not doing anything. So like people want to have a conversation. And I like working. I like to just keep going. You can see all that shape that's happening in there. Product's got a really nice hold, uh, so I like that about it. Um, the lavender scent is making me sleepy <laughs> as it's coming through. Serena, you're very welcome. Do you diffuse the crown area? Judy, I do, um, and I will. I'm just kind of working my way up there. So I start at the bottom and just kind of work my way through it. I will diffuse that crown area. Sometimes I'll have my guests tilt their head back in the chair, and then that's how I'll do that crown area. Um, or I'll just use the fingers of the diffuser and work the crown area up just slightly like that. And that'll give me a little bit of volume as well. And once this hair is dry, like once you have your client's curly hair dry or your curly hair, whatever, um, once it's dry, then you put your hands in it, it doesn't get frizzy. And then you can use maybe a serum or something um, and go through it, wrap it around your finger a little bit. Um, but you got to make sure it's dry first. Product's good for all types of hair. I think so. Um, I'll have to see what it says on the thing. Uh, like I said, you know, Paul Mitchell is a 
huge supporter of free salon education. Um, they don't ask much of me. They just send me a box of products and, and ask me to enjoy them. So I just got this box of tools and products today. And uh, so I wanted to share it with you guys. It, it kind of fit what we were doing. So I'll go over each of those products. So they all seem pretty geared towards curly hair or, or hair repair. I like seeing all your comments. It's fun. If doing this haircut on fine hair, how do you get away from the bottom becoming too thin? What I would do, if this was fine hair, I'm gonna make my head not cut off here. Better? Yeah. Uh, if this was fine hair, what I would do so that the bottom didn't stay, didn't get too weak, um, I would cut the whole haircut first, then I would cut the baseline. What that's going to do is give me a harder baseline, and it'll bring that baseline up a little bit. If you think about it, the way that we cut it, the way that we cut this uh, initially was we used the baseline to determine where that weak point was going to be. If you wanted to have a stronger baseline, all you have to do is determine where you want the layers to be, which is what I would do with fine hair, determine that first. Then at the very end, I'd go through and cut a blunt line a little bit up from where that guideline would have been, and that would give me a thicker guideline. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I'm not skimping out on this today, guys. I'm not going to do it. I'm not shortening it. You got to hang with me. I see... See, a lot of you guys are hanging. A couple hundred people on. Who's working in the salon today? Anybody? Julie, thanks for, thanks and thanks for doing these. Wish I could afford their products. Paul Mitchell products are not expensive. If you can afford any products, I would think Paul Mitchell you could afford. Uh, do you work on a client who has a wig on and have you been surprised with that it was a wig? Um, I've worked on clients' wigs before, but I've never worked on one while they're wearing it. Um, they usually would drop it off and then I would uh, work on it and then they would pick it up. Georgina, I'm working today. Awesome. Serena, first test in beauty school tonight. Very cool. So this fringe area, I'm just taking the, the fingers of the diffuser and lifting it up. This might be where you would go to low heat uh, because I'm keeping it right on the head. Um, and then that way you're not burning them. Today, she doesn't have any feelings, so I'm going straight high heat. But I would go low heat on a client. Judy, I'm home learning stuff. Your videos help lots. Awesome. James, it's 12 a.m. here in the Philippines. Yeah, that's uh, probably not working then. All right. Look at that shape. Now, we're really going to create some volume in the fringe, but I'm, I'm going to tame it down with my hands when I'm done. But I want the volume at the base. D, I choose you as my mentor in cosmetology school, Paul Mitchell Toledo. Nice. Thank you. I have my license, but no job. I'm so lost on where to start. I'm in my 40s. That's a good one. You know what? I'll answer that when I get back over to the mic. All right, now I'm going to calm these down. Almost there, guys. Way to hang in. I 
I'm really enjoying the the amount of hold. Um, I don't know if I'm getting it from the cream or the foam. Fragrant revitalizing foam calms the mind as it re revives fullness and texture. It does, re my mind is gone. I, I'm sleeping. Would you have them bend over to do the top of the head? Probably, yeah. I would probably tilt them forward a little bit. Um, or this works just as good, just kind of coming in and then lifting it up with the, the diffuser. I think people don't take advantage of that as much. Um, use those fingers to kind of pull that hair up a little bit. I find that diffusing makes my already thick hair feel thicker and more frizzy. Uh, all right, Iris. I, I think um, some of my clients, um, they don't diffuse and they're fine. And they have really thick curly hair, so they don't really need to diffuse it. Um, so they'll just put in like a nice, uh, like the taming cream uh, with a little bit of hold. And they'll, but the process would be the same. So I put that throughout the hair, brush it in, and then scrunch it with a, with a damp towel. And then you could let it air dry if you wanted to, especially if you're not in a super humid area. Um, the reason I like diffusing is when you are in a humid area, it allows... Um, uh, you to control how the hair is drying and not the, the moisture outside. Hey, Matt, totally irrelevant to this cut, but I love your videos. Do you have a plan to do a video on curtain bangs? Lauren, I will do curtain bangs this week. Um, yeah, I'll do curtain bangs this week. So one of the shows this week, got to tune into all of them. I will do a curtain fringe. Almost there. In beauty school, they used to like, you would kind of think that diffusing hair got you done faster. Um, I think it takes just as long. You're still drying every single hair on the head. So, not a shortcut. All right, it's pretty much dry. And then we're gonna do the last little bit of cutting so you guys can see that. You know I can't end a haircut without T's cutting it somewhere. Are those Paul Mitchell new curl products? I don't know if they're considering these curl products, but they're the foam is definitely, it says curl on it and adds texture. Um, I think they're just new to the lavender mint tea tree uh, category line. Um, I don't even know if they're out yet. I don't even know if I was supposed to use them yet. I could be breaking the rules. Hopefully not. All right, it's pretty much there. If it's not, we'll keep going, but let's check it out. So one thing I wanna do, I think there was a frizz control. So this product is cool, uh, Moisture Milk, it's called. I don't know if it's cool, but I, it seems cool to me. We're gonna try it now. So we're gonna pump this out. So do a little bit of that. Nice white product. Cool. I'll run that in my hands. This is for frizz control. So I always want to put something in my hands that kind of helps with frizz. So the heaviness, I love the fringe. Where is it? Here we go. 
So you can see that shape. I'm really loving that. I love this kind of buildup of the fringe and the top expands out. Love that. So now the only thing I want to do to this is take out this weight in the back, which we created. So I don't want to take too much of it because this is why I really wanted to see it. So you can see how this is heavier right here, right? This is where we brought everything forward, cut the fringe. So that builds this stack, right? And it builds kind of a short to long feeling. So now what I want to do is I just want to cut into this part and we'll use no comb at all. I'm going to zoom in. So I'm not going to use a comb at all. I'm just going to hold the hair up just like this and I'm going to tease cut into it. It's a half close of the scissor. So I'm half closing in cutting through. So it's like this half close in, bring it out. So here half close in, bring it out half close in. And I just pinch the hair in my hand and I go in half close just like that. So I'll go through here and just work the round of the head in that crown area and take some of these longer hairs and just cut, cut into them. All I'm doing is expanding this shape in the crown. So that's what I want to do. I want to build this up. So just like that, cut through. Grabbing some of these longer pieces. Yes. There you can see, like that is, oh, first off, I'm so psyched on this haircut. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. Um, super fun. It's got a ton of texture in it. The shag is like really popular. Um, I don't see it going away. And I just love the way this shape kind of built out. So let me gotta bring some of this. What do you guys think? You need those scissors. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. These scissors, this is the scissor that Mizutani made for me. I have them on the website, but literally um, there's only a few, like there's not many left. I don't even know how many, but there's not a lot. So if you want this scissor, you wanna own it. And I don't know if they're making it again. That's not really up to me. Um, you should go to our website, freesaloneducation.com and buy it. Uh, Look at that shape. So I love it. The expansion of that, the build up here, like you wouldn't have to do it this expanded if you didn't want to you Could do it a little sleeker. Um, the way that you would do that is take less fringe. So just not bringing it as far forward. For me, I love that kind of heaviness to it. The flow of the layers off of the face that all came from pulling it to the front and cutting it right here. Um, and then that pushes that weight back. Then this kind of even feel all the way around, that was our concave layering that we did all the way throughout. So I totally, uh, I love the cut. I love the shape. Hope you guys like it. Let me see. Let me. Let me do a breakdown real quick um, while, while I have you guys here. Um, let me tap this because. All right, so. While I have you guys here, hope you guys like it. Um, let me know in the comments if you do. I'll cut my head off here. Okay. Hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments if you do. Um, if you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, make sure you do that because you get the alerts whenever we're live. Um, you can always see the replays of all this stuff. Facebook is good as well, but sometimes um, you guys don't catch things as much. Facebook's very uh, weary with who they share things with. Um, so make sure that you go subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. Also, um, thank you to everyone that tuned in live. You guys are all awesome. I'm going to keep doing this. We're going to do it every day this week. Um, just different lessons every day. So if you guys have an idea you want to send me on Instagram, do that. And then um, these are the products that Paul Mitchell sent. So if those of you guys that were asking and are interested, it's all uh, tea tree lavender mint. 
Um, this is co-wash. It's a conditioning and no lather cleanse. I thought that was kind of cool. So um, there wasn't even like a conditioner with this uh, shipment. It's just a conditioning, no lather uh, shampoo or cleaner, cleanser. Um, the other one that I didn't show you guys, so there was a defining gel. Um, sometimes I love to mix gel and cream together. So um, instead of doing the foaming cream, maybe I'd do gel and cream if I had something I wanted a little extra hold with, but I felt like the foam did hold pretty well. And then um, this is the overnight moisture therapy, restores hair and enhances sleep quality. So you guys, this will really put you to sleep. Um, you could put this on the hair, spray it. Oh no, it's not a spray. So another cream. Mm. Oh, that one's good. That doesn't smell like, usually they're like really strong lavender. This one smells delicious. I don't know what that is. Um, all right, so that's the product breakdown. Thank you to Paul Mitchell for sending that, sponsoring Free Salon Education and being such a great partner of ours. Um, all right, guys, we will be back tomorrow. Um, if you guys, again, have any questions, make sure you post them. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys on the next video. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. All right. I'm not gone yet. I want to do a close of the podcast because all this stuff that we record, guys, um, friends, Everything that we record uh, on this show is part of uh, the reason I want to do this live every day is so you guys constantly have content coming out. It's easy for me to do this live because that's what I did for years is taught classes um, and was just able to collect content. So um, I do a podcast first and then um, we do a live class. We can cut pieces of that up and put it out on different platforms like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, we repost just the haircut part. We post the audio part on iTunes. So there's so much stuff happening. Um, and so that's why I'm really just thankful that you guys hang in there. Um, I can see your, oh yeah, I wanted to, um, I wanted to answer the question about with the lady that just got out of school. Um, she's in her forties, I think she said, and she is having issues finding a job. For me, I think anybody coming out of school now, if you're trying to get a job in the beauty industry, I think you need to start first off in school. So I know she's out of school already, but those of you guys that are in school listening to this, um, make sure that you're documenting everything that you do. Um, if you look at the way that the world is now, everybody is kind of telling their story through the internet. And I think a lot of people are falling behind because they're not. Um, it really goes to show like what I'm doing here. I come here, I do a live class, we cut it up into all this different stuff, we share it on the internet. You are in, if you're in school, you should be f filming and doing everything you can to document your your progress. Think about, um, you know, when you get out of school, if you can document all these different cuts that you did, colors that you did, situations you were in, all that stuff, and you can share it. Um, the other thing that I think is a really big beneficial thing that you can do um, while you're in school or when you get out of school and you're looking at certain salons is tag the salon in everything that you do. Um, tagging somebody on the internet is like saying, Hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing. And I don't think people do it enough and they tag the wrong people. Like you're tagging American salon or modern salon. Like, why are you tagging them? What are they going to do for you, for your career? Tag salons that you want to work in. Um, tag your clients, tag local businesses, tag things that have to do with your business and not, um, you know, things that don't. So, and I say American Salon, Modern Salon, I mean all of them. I mean all of the, all of the media companies, all they're going to do, like a big, huge media company shared my salon, uh, post the other day, um, a picture of my salon. And it was the worst. I, I, as soon as it happened, I was like, oh no, because when they share your work, it goes out to the, all the random people that follow them. Right. And they have nothing to do with your business. Your business is local. Your business is uh, the person down the street. It's not being famous on the internet, 
right? So don't worry. Don't post, don't tag people um, that aren't helping your business. Um, so that's, that's my statement on that. So if I was getting out of school and I wanted to get a job at a salon, and I was having issues, I would look at myself, I would start doing hair for free as much as possible to get content that I could then start tagging salons in so they could see how good I was. Um, I would much rather hire somebody, and I know Christina would feel the same way, is if if we saw them constantly on the internet posting and tagging us, um, it would be awesome. It would be like, oh, this person really likes us and wants to work with us. So um, think about those things uh, when you're when you're trying to grow your career as a hairdresser, find the song that you really look up to and you like and start tagging them. Um, all right, guys. So thank you. If you listen to the audio edition and you're wondering how did I miss the haircut, go to YouTube. You can watch this whole show on YouTube. Uh, if you just like the audio version, thanks for that as well. And if you wanted to tune into the audio, go to Anchor, um, download the Anchor app. Uh, I love that app because it allows you to ask questions, to get involved, to use your voice to communicate with me um, on the podcast so that I can listen to your questions and answer them uh, at a later date. So it's a really cool app. It's like social media, but for podcasts. So thank you to MinervaBeauty.com. You guys are awesome. Uh, Remember, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Uh, Get your salon looking awesome. And tomorrow and every day, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll be live. Thank you guys so much. Um, All right out of here. Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews. Let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. Woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Have a great day, guys.